Hey guys, well, I'm out in the shop today and I'm trying to take care of a small project that I've been trying to get to for a couple of weeks. I found that after moving the X2 out, moving the Precision Matthews in here and starting to use it, I don't have a place to keep all my TTS tool holders so I thought I would just take a 10 inch piece of 2 inch angle and just machine me some holes in here, a couple small holes to mount it and then I can put five TTS holders in here for whatever job I'm happen to be working on at the time. I want to just kind of keep all my tools uh, from you know messing them up. Right now I've just tried to lay them in a drawer here but even though I try to keep them separated they do get banged around a little bit so hopefully keep my tools a little bit more organized so I, earlier I went into Fusion 360 and drew this up here's a quick tutorial okay well I'm going to show you how to draw up this quick and easy TTS rack using a piece of 2 inch angle 10 inches long now with this drawing I used sketches but I've figured out an easier way to draw this up. So let's take a look. So first we're just going to create a box. Let's put it on the Z plane here. Click in the center. It's going to be two inches. Tab over. Two inches. Hit enter. And then we're going to be 10 inches long. Again, hit enter. All right. Now we're going to come back and modify, fill it. And we want to get this edge and this edge and this edge and this edge. And let's go with. Let's see, one inch. Let's see what that looks like. All right, that looks good. So we'll click OK. Click our home button. And let's get on the right side here. Then we want to create another box. And we want to go to this corner. And we can want to come up 1.875, tab over and do the same. Click OK. And then we want to go through and we want to remove all that material. And there we have our angle iron with the corners cut off. Let's go to the top here. We want to create a hole. We want to click this top surface. This hole needs to be 0.8 in diameter and it needs to be 0 0.140 deep. Alright, it's 0.14 inches deep. Now let's click in the center here and then click on this line. It will want to be 1 inch. And then click in the center in this edge here and we want to be one inch as well and click enter all right now we have our first hole now we need to put five holes in here so we're going to go to create pattern rectangular pattern and you want to click on this face right here and then click direction and you want to go in the X direction so click on the X there and just pull them out and then we want to change this to five because we want five holes and we also want to change the distance type to spacing and we want them 
two inches apart. Click OK. And there we have our five holes. Now we just need a couple of mounting holes in the back here. So again, create a hole. Click on this face here. And then we want this hole to be, say, 3 sixteenths, thereabouts, 0.1875. Get rid of a decimal here. Okay. You can make it whatever size you want. Uh, the depth is okay. And the location, we want to click on the center here and here and let's make it 1.25 so it's a little off center and 1.25 here I want to click OK now we can simply just put another hole here or you can go up and create a pattern again And follow the same steps. Click this face. We want to have two. We want to go in this direction. We want to have two. Want to change this to 7.5. All right. Want to change this to 7.5. Click OK. And there you have your second mounting hole. So you can see, pretty simple, easy to do, in seven simple steps. All right. For the cam operations, I'll go back to my original here. We can pull up the cam. I did this in two setups. So first we're going to be boring our holes. I used a two-dimensional boring operation. I used a three eighths inch four flute end mill, three thousands RPMs, uh, 15 inches per minute, and about 40 thousandths depth of cut. It's a spiral so and then next I just use 2D adaptive clearing to remove the corners here. Again, using a 3 8 inch end mill. For the second setup, board the two holes. I actually board them 11 30 seconds because that's the drill bit that I had. And then again, adaptive clearing to just knock the corners off. All right, so if you're interested in this drawing, I'll post this model and you can download this if you want. But I suggest you give it a try. It's a simple, easy project to draw up in Fusion 360 and a fun machining project. So let's go out to the mill and we'll see how this is uh, machined.
All right, well, aside from quite a bit of vibration because this is just a piece of angle iron clamped in here, I think if I uh, were going to do a bunch of these, I'd probably try to figure out a better way to clamp this up. The new coat hanger GoPro mount looks like the vibration uh, didn't seem to affect it too much so I'm pretty pleased with that now let's uh, turn it around and we'll do the second setup we're gonna just drill some holes and knock these corners off in there and uh, we can just mount it in screw it to the wall you can put it inside your enclosure uh, you can put it down on the front of your enclosure right here maybe mount it down here somewhere or I think I might put mine on the side of my toolbox here all right so you can see it's mounted on the side of my toolbox here looks real nice and this gives me a place to store the tools that I'm using for a particular job and they're not all stuck in the drawer clinging around. So for you loyal subscribers that made it this far in the video or at least those of you who watched the end you know it's hard to machine just one of something so I made a couple of extras so if you'll shoot me an email at cnc for xr 7 at gmail.com so over the next 10 days for those of you who email me I'll save up the emails and we'll have a drawing I'll draw a couple of names out of the hat and I'll ship you one of these TTS tool racks thanks for watching guys if you have any suggestions or questions please feel free to comment thanks for watching the videos thumbs up if you like the video Please subscribe, and most importantly, be safe.